So the first topic that I wanted to talk about was new fight announcements and fighters joining other organizations. First of all, one of the number one fights to look out for that's coming down is Justin Gaethje versus Charles Oliveira. What a massive fight for the 155 pound division for that belt. Charles Oliveira being on the tear that he is. This is the second title shot that Justin Gaethje is going to have. And it's going to be a special one. Seeing where Charles Oliveira is coming from in terms of beating some people that automatically thought that they had a right for that belt. Michael Chandler and Dustin Poirier at the time, when they fought for the belt against Charles Oliveira, it kind of felt like that belt was just ready for the taking. And both of those fighters were supposed to be Charles Oliveira. And it was such a surprise for the MMA world to see Charles Oliveira defeat both of them in spectacular fashion. The way that Charles Oliveira is buzzsawing through the 155-pound division is very special, and it is a must to compete with the aura and the way that Khabib ran that division. Even though Khabib wasn't at top at uh, 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 at the top of that division for a very long time, he did rule by taking out some really big names, and it was very tough. Dustin Poirier, Justin Gaethje, uh, Conor McGregor, you name it. There was a bunch of heavy hitters that tried fighting Khabib Nurmagomedov. And for Charles Oliveira to, to keep that aura, to, to keep all of these guys at bay, the, uh, in the 155-pound division, it's a shark tank. And Justin Gaethje is just, he's making the rounds again trying to get that belt from Charles Oliveira. What a special fight. It's going to be a great one. And uh, this is one of those ones that hopefully with a big crowd and uh, with Charles Oliveira's, you know, gaining popularity, it's going to be, it's going to be a great one. Justin Gaethje, the highlight is always fun to watch. And uh, he's a fan favorite. And it seems like they're throwing murder after murder, after uh, Charles Oliveira. And if he can go through these tests, that could shoot him up as one of the greatest 155ers of all time really quickly. And then, and this is exactly what he needs. Next fight, outside of the UFC, I was talking about Khabib Nurmagomedov. Let's talk about his organization, Eagle FC is going to have a fight between Kevin Lee versus Diego Sanchez. That's going to be um, an interesting one where Kevin Lee is more in his prime of his career, coming off a couple losses in the UFC, but it was against great competition. Diego Sanchez, uh, unfortunately, leaving the organization, leaving the UFC um, with bad terms, with weird coaching, there was a lot of things that was going on in Diego Sanchez's life that led to him leaving the UFC. Kevin Lee was a different reason. It seemed like due to the the management that he had, it made the UFC kick him out. So this is going to be a good one in terms of name recognition for Eagle FC, meaning that you're going to get a lot of eyeballs on this event. But I think you're really uh, teeter-tottering over that line of freak show fights versus, uh, you know, a real organization like the Top Dogs, like 1FC, like Bellator, like the UFC. Do you want to be known to put on these fights? Bellator, even the UFC, puts on these fights like... um, for example, CM Punk or any Jake Hager in Bellator, these these fighters that come in with big names and they're fighting opponents that, that they're just way above. So for Kevin Lee, this is a great start in the organization. This is just to get the motor running. But 
Eagle FC really has a lot of work ahead of them in signing some bigger names to the organization. That's going to be a tough one for Khabib Nurmagomedov and the crew there. Okay, so next fight. I think this is a really interesting one and great choice for the UFC. The UFC gets condemned for a lot of its choices that it's make, it, it makes in their matchmaking. But I think they, this is great matchmaking here. If you got a person like Cowboy Cerrone and Joe Lozon who still want to fight in the in the top level organization and they got these big names and you know that you don't want to want them to leave and fight for one of your competitors to have them go against each other is great. It's the perfect if it's the perfect way for both of these fighters to carry on their career. Joe Lozon being one of the you know, highest paid athletes in the UFC via bonus. Uh, Cowboy Cerrone having the most wins in the UFC at one point. Uh, I still think that he has it. Uh, we'll, I'll have to double check on that. But both of these guys, record holders in the UFC. And for Cowboy Cerrone, who's um, kind of been... Uh, slowing down in this part of his career, going against someone like Joe Lozon, who's not going to knock you out with a you know, massive right hand or something like that. It, I think it's the perfect fight for him. It's the perfect fight to taper off his career. What a special career both of these men have had. Joe Lozon taking off some time, and this is uh, going to be his first COVID fight. During this era, who knows, maybe he fights in the apex without anybody. Uh, I forget if Cowboy Cerrone has fought in the apex without anybody yet. But anyways, this is a great fight. We got to applaud the UFC at some point when they make great decisions like this. We can't just always just go after them for every little mistake that they make. This is a good fight. Great fan favorite fight. This is this is gonna be, um. So let's talk about uh, Jeremy Stevens, one of my favorite fighters, uh, going off to the PFL, saying that he's making just a little bit more in his PFL career uh, compared to his UFC career. Um, the main thing for him is going into the one fifty five pound tournament. And winning that $1 million, he says it's uh, very doable. Um, to be honest with you, it's not like we got some big names in that 155-pound division. Um, you can name many in that in that division. Maybe uh, Anthony Pettis might move down to 155. That was a super tough weight cut for him. He's now a 170-pounder. He might move up in weight as well. Um so and and you got the current champion but aside from that and maybe like Rory McDonald um Jeremy Stevens who's had a very long career has kept it going with the way that he keeps his body um the way that he trains the way that he operates has allowed him to have this long of a career it's very special. Jeremy Stevens is is a special fighter. I think just by looking at him, people forget how young he is. Or excuse me, how old he is because he looks so young. But, you know, he's been in the game for a very long time, Jeremy Stevens. Um in terms of fight career, it's been a super long time. Um so, you know, it's uh it's tough to see him go, but I think it's um I think it might be a good move for him to start maybe making some moves in another organization like the PFL who might have some easier fights um for him. His last couple of fights have been with some killers who have honestly put a pace on him. Calvin Cater comes to mind. Um in that fight Calvin Cater is a top contender. We just saw him take out uh, Giga. And that just shows you that this guy, Calvin Cater, is no joke. And for Jeremy Stevens to go in there and fight killer after killer 
all the time. It must be tough for him. And, and, um, I really believe in, in, in sometimes getting an easier fight just to get the motor started. I was talking about, uh, Kevin Lee, Diego Sanchez, Kevin Lee, uh, Lee's fight might be that kickstarter that he needs and it might just be perfect for both of them so I think that uh, Jeremy Stevens joining the PFL is a great one okay so 